the challenge of the Yukon. A king, a new husky. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The Groundhog Cafe in High Top was crowded as Sergeant Preston and King made their way through the miners, trappers, and gamblers, standing two and three deep at the bar. Hello there, Sergeant. Just get in. Hello, Tom. How's your luck tonight? Ah, not so good. Seems like the cards are getting me. Stop it at the cabin sometime. Me and Tim be glad to see you. Well, thanks. I'll do that one of these days. Hello, Clem. Well, Sergeant Preston. You ain't a sight for sore eyes. How are you? Fine, fine. How's everything with you? Never been better. (laughs) <laughs> Played pretty crowded, ain't it? Oh, well, the groundhog's never empty. That's Mike's boast, isn't it? Yep. I say, I guess you're looking for Mike. Well, I'd like to see him, but well, finding him in this mob seems hopeless. Oh, he's back in his office. Come on. Uh, drinks around the house, if you mind to have some. Oh, thanks, Clem, but you know how it is. Yeah, yeah I know. 24 hours a day on duty. Uh, here you are. Mike's going to be glad to see you. Only yesterday he was asking about you. Who is it? I brought you a visitor, Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you? Preston. Well, it sure is good to see you. Sit down. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir, by golly. I was wondering how long it would take you to get back to our neck of the woods. Whenever we hit high top, you're the first person we look for. <laughs> hear that, Clem? That's how the law feels about me. No wonder you make sure the dealers shell out honest curds. Uh, I guess I'd better be getting back to the tables. See you later, Sergeant. Right. I'll stop by to see how much of Mike's gold you lose to those poker players. Oh, don't you worry about me losing any. <laughs> Clem's a great boy. Uh, you're lucky to have him working for you, Mike. He's honest and dependable. You don't have to tell me. I know it. Oh, say, that reminds me. Huh? Funny thing happened the other day. Oh, now, Mike. This isn't going to be another one of those stories of yours, is no, it? No, no. This is on the level. You remember... Well, what's wrong with my stories? (laughs) Nothing, except that by the time I get around to you, every miner from Skagway to High Tops told me the same story. Oh. Well, as I was going to say, you remember Egg Larson? Used to work for me? Larson? Yeah. We used to call him Egg because of the way his head stuck out in the back. Big fella. Yes, yes, I remember him. He could carry them kegs up from the cellar like there was a feller. Well, what about him? Well, he's back in town. Wants to go to work again, huh? No, not that. He wants to buy me out. Wants to buy you out? Larson? Yeah. I thought it was kind of funny myself when he made the offer. But he meant it. Oh, wait a minute, Mike. Let me get this straight. He used to sweep the floors here, didn't he? That's right. But he wants to pay me 10000 in cash for the groundhog. Of course, I won't sell. Told him so, too. And he upped the price 5000 Oh, he must have made a rich strike. A man who was sweeping floors six months ago can't turn around and scare up $15,000 cash just like that. Thought the same thing. But when I asked him about it, he said no. Well, that is funny. But then maybe he has some luck lately and he wants to keep it quiet. Is he still in town? Yeah. Says he ain't going to leave till he makes a deal with me. Uh, what's wrong with King? And what is it, boy? Huh? The window, Mike. Stay back, Stay back, Mike. I'm going to see who fired that shot. Oh, no, you don't. I'm coming with you. Uh, go on. Well, come on. Let's follow him. Follow what? He's mingled with that crowd now, Mike. Hmm. What are you looking for? Tracks. Can't tell much in this mud. I, I don't understand. Who'd want to shoot us? Uh, if King hadn't growled, we'd have both been dead men right now. I wonder. I wonder which one of us he wanted to kill. You mean, you don't think he was after both of us? I don't know, Mike. It was too dark to see his face. 
All I saw was the muzzle of a gun. Oh, no, I don't mind telling you. A, a lantern, do you have one inside? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll get it for you. Well, King, old boy, you saved a life. Have a lift just a minute. All right. Uh, there we are. Here you are, Sergeant. I'll bring it over here, will you, Mike? Yep. Hmm. This is where he was standing, all right. Now, I'll bet he heard what we were saying, too. That wind up. He listened for a few seconds before King warned us. What? How can you tell that? Well, these tracks are deeper here, see? But they mingle with too many others. Uh, them tracks could be made by almost any man in the Yukon. Well, might as well go back inside. I sure hate to think of whoever that was coming back to finish what he started. He'll be back, all right. He'll be back. Sergeant Preston carefully examined the bullet which had penetrated the wall, but every minute they spent in the small office worried the cafe owner. Sergeant, I'll shoot it out with any man, but I'm not going to stay in this room and invite that rat to take another shot at us. It ain't safe. King will warn us. Mike, you know that. I don't care. Even with that window locked, it's no sign it'll stop a bullet. Come on, let's go out front. Besides, you said he'd be back. I said that because I know criminals. The first thing he'll do is to come back here just to make sure suspicion doesn't rest on him. Most of them return to the scene of their crime. I don't think our mysterious friend is any exception to that. That's fine. Just fine. You got any idea when he'll be back? No. No, I haven't. Well, I'm not staying here. I'll make sure this door is locked first. All right. If it'll make you feel any better, we'll go out. Good. Yeah, it's locked. I don't usually carry this. I'm a peaceful man. But I ain't taking any chances. Ready? Mm-hmm. And as for King here, he'll get the best rations we got in the house. Say, a man would have a lot more reason to kill you, Sergeant, than he would me. Maybe you're trailing someone. No, but... Mike, this is one time I've come to high top with a clean slate. No clues to track down, no one in particular to keep an eye on. I can't figure it out. Well, might as well go over and see how Clem's making out. Well, let's hope the house is winning. Yeah, so since you ain't had luck in anything else tonight. Hiya, Sam. Hello, Mike. Through this way, Sergeant. Ready for another game, gents? What is it, boy? Where? What? The... Easy, Mike. What? Are you... He's growling again. Wait till I get, get that the... gun out of sight. <laughs> hey, get that gun away from me! Get out, I say! Quiet, King. King, King. That's it, boy. That's funny. I've never seen King jump at a man like that before. It must be because you're a stranger here, eh? Now, you remember Egg Larson, don't you, Sergeant? Oh, yes, yes, of course. He just came in about ten minutes ago. Quiet, King, quiet. What's wrong with that dog? Well, you better keep both hands in sight, Egg. King seems to think when you reach for your pocket that you have a gun in there. It's all right, boy, it's all oh, right. Oh, so that's it. Well, I'll keep my hands in sight if that leaves his mind any. Oh, that's better. I, uh, hear you just got back to High Top a few days ago. Yeah, that's right. I was over in Machete today. Just got in a little while ago, so I thought I'd stop in for a few drinks. I see. Place hasn't changed much since you left, has it? Mm -hmm. Looks the same to me. You, uh, ain't changed your mind about that deal we were talking about, Mike. Mm -hmm. Me? Oh, Oh, no, no, I haven't changed my mind. You want to buy the ground, Hog, huh? Oh, Mike told you, huh? Yes. What do you think of it, Sergeant? The guy's working here sweeping floors and toting them barrels up from the cellar. Six months later, he comes back with enough dough to buy the place. <laughs> sure wish I had that kind of luck. You know, Mike, I think maybe you ought to listen to Egg's proposition. I don't get you, Sergeant. You don't mean you think I ought to sell out to him, do you? Well, I think we all ought to go back to your office and talk it over. How about it, Egg? Sure, suits me. Go back to my office. Yes, Mike, yeah, that's right. Back to your office. How about you, Clem? Can you leave the game for a few minutes? Me? Oh, sure, I guess so. Hey, Lefty. Yeah? Uh, how about taking over for a while? Yeah, sure. I think I'm making Mike a fair offer, Sergeant. Maybe you can talk him into selling. We'll see. Sergeant, what's this all about? Why are we going back to my office? King's already been right once tonight, Mike. Yeah. What's that got to do with this? You'll see. 
Play along with me for the next few minutes and keep your gun handy. You might need it. Well, I don't know why you've got Clem in on this. He'd never... Quiet. On the level, eh? Tell me just this much. Did you strike it, Rich? Where'd you think I got the money to offer Mike if I didn't? But that's all I'm saying, see? I don't aim to have a lot of miners swarming around my claim. There we are. Yeah. And I'm offering Mike 15000 for the groundhog, Sergeant. And I'm willing to cut him in on half of whatever liquor I sell for six months after I take the place over. That's fair enough, ain't it? Hmm. What do you think, Mike? It's just that I don't want to sell out, Sergeant. I like the cafe business. I didn't come up to the Yukon to do any prospecting. What would I do with the money when I'd get it? No, sir. In the first place, the groundhog's worth more than 15000 I wouldn't sell out for 25000 I'd think a long time before going into the cafe business if I were you, Egg. Now, now, listen, I like this place. Well, I can remember when I was working here sweeping the floors. Now that I got some cash, I'd like to own it. You might say I got sentimental reasons. Sentimentality might not compensate for the headaches you'd have. I don't savvy. Well, take tonight, for instance. Well, what about tonight? Well, Mike and I were standing here, talking right here in this room. Someone took a shot at him through the window. Yeah? He got away. But his tracks are still outside the window. Why'd anyone want to kill you, Mike? Come on outside. I'll show you the tracks. I'd like to see them. How about you, Egg? Don't forget the lantern, Mike. I want these tracks to show up plainly for Egg. You say there are tracks out there? Well, Mike and I saw them not half an hour ago. But you'll see them for yourself. No. No, I'll just sit here. You're all right. Stop where you are. All of you. A gun. Larson. I thought so. Well, then you should have been prepared, Sergeant Preston. We thought you'd get me to stand beside them tracks out there, and then you'd prove from my tracks that they'd both be the same. Well, I ain't that dumb. You? Yes, me. You had your chance to sell me this place, and you wouldn't take it. But I don't understand. Why? Why do you want it? Not just because you worked here. <laughs> Maybe the sergeant here can answer that before I take time to aim again. You've done all the talking this far, Egg. No reason why you should stop now. And it won't do you much good to know that there's gold under this place. Gold that I found pulling them kegs around down the cellar. I took care to cover it up before I left to make sure the secret was safe. I borrowed the money I brought back to pay you off, Mike. Gold in my cellar? Yeah, only it's going to be mine. And none of you will ever live to see a nugget of it. Look out in back of you. <laughs> Just full of tricks, huh? Thought I'd fall for that old... Get him, King! No! Get that gun, Clem. I got it, Sergeant. Get away from me! All right, King. All right, boy. Get up, Egg. You heard me. Get up. All right. It might interest you to know that I never would have suspected you if it King hadn't been for King. King? King knew him. That's right. Well, I'll be... If you hadn't caught of them footprints, Sergeant, you'd have never caught him. I gotta hand it to you. Now don't hand it to me, Clem. Those footprints are probably indistinguishable by now. What do you mean? This mud won't hold a footprint for half an hour. The impression's probably left. The footprint wouldn't be recognizable. Say, that's right. That mud's almost like soup. The credit belongs to King, Mike, for solving this case. And now, Larson, you'd better start thinking up an alibi for a charge of attempted manslaughter. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the Great Dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again on Saturday at this same time. On King! On you Huskies! Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, Brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious.